Okay, so now this brings us to step three of the averaging procedure. So typically, uh, in most problems uh, of interest, when you obtain the equation for the average, you will not be able to obtain it in a closed form. That means the equation, when you average, will introduce terms for either other moments like it has done here, uh, or it, if, it doesn't, it come in, if it doesn't come in moment form, you will be forced to write C, forced in some way to calculate C prime. Uh, this is sorry, not C prime, C tilde. So step three in our the context of our problem is to obtain an approximate relationship between C M and C bar, or more generally. between C tilde and C bar. Okay, so why do I say approximate relationship? Well, because if I could obtain an exact relationship between C tilde and C bar, then that means I can rewrite this C entirely in terms of, uh, sorry, not in terms of the average concentration. If C tilde could be obtained in terms of the average concentration exactly, then that means I would know C in terms of the average concentration exactly, which would mean like I've just solved the problem completely. And we shall, that will be clearer to us uh, as we go. So that is only possible if you could have anyway solved this problem exactly, right? But that is not a general, uh, I mean, that's not what we want to achieve in any way. It would complicate this problem to the level where we might as well have just solved the original mm -hmm. equation. Rather, we are looking for a simplified treatment that gives us insight and which would be applicable even in non-linear different partial differential equations and so therefore we are going to seek an approximate relationship but what will be our basis of approximation that is now going to be our familiar old friend uh, perturbation methods but the first step before we think of applying perturbation is to uh, derive an equation for c tilde Right? Because the objective now, the only unknown in our problem is really C tilde. If we know C tilde as a function of the cross-section average concentration, uh, then we can uh, basically evaluate this integral for Cm, right? Because we can replace C as cross-section averaged C plus C tilde. And then uh, basically you have to evaluate the integral in terms of C tilde. We would get a final result only in terms of the cross-section average and we can close this problem. Okay, so where do we obtain an equation for C tilde? Uh, the answer is uh, really to return to the original equation one, remembering that we have used a part of the information of the governing PD, right? So when we obtain an equation for the average, we averaged out the PD one to obtain this uh, average equation right, that we have here. So there is information left over from the averaged equation. And that is what we can use to obtain an equation for C tilde. So what we do is we take the average equation. Sorry. We substitute 2, which is the decomposition of C in terms of average and C tilde. So we substitute that decomposition into the original PD and we subtract the average equation that we obtain. So, to, so that the leftover information in the PD uh, comes out naturally. So that would give us the equation for C tilde. Okay, so what do we have if we do this? Let me just write that down now for you. So I substitute uh, C is equal to C average plus C tilde. The diffusion term acting on C average is zero, right? Because uh, C average does not vary in R. So the diffusion term will just give me the following. Right? So only its action on C tilde survives. That must be equal to the Peclet number times So this is after substituting, of course, uh, 
like I said, the decomposition. So the time derivative being a linear operator just splits up. Right, and now remember I'm subtracting out uh, the equation. the averaged equation right uh, and I can so basically I can multiply this by p and subtract it out that's what I mean in fact originally it did have p so I get minus ddt of the average minus ddx of the cup mixing average of the cup mixing average but here instead of writing it in cup mixing form I'll write it in its original form which involves c and then substitute c as a c mean plus c tilde times of course u right so the u is important here so this was this is basically the definition of our uh, cup mixing average but i replaced c as uh, the mean c and c tilde okay so now you see the time derivative cancels out so that was the utility of subtracting out three and all we are left with is an equation now in terms of uh, for c tilde but in terms of uh, uh, C mean not the cross section average ok so this is my equation for C tilde now like I said I can't solve this equation exactly uh, if I could solve this exactly then I would have basically been able to solve the original equation because it is as complicated as that equation but this is where now I really make my uh, simplification using the fact that p is small so using the fact that p is much less than 1 we seek a perturbative solution to c tilde as c tilde is equal to c tilde naught plus p c tilde 1 plus order of p square so now you see the difference that from our earlier naive application of domain perturbation was there we had tried to get the perturbation expansion for c directly and that uh, foiled us at the first step but now we have decomposed concentration into the fast uh, mode which is just the mean mode right which we couldn't actually obtain at zeroth order here but we have a separate equation for this average mode uh, and then the remainder is this c tilde so we've obtained an equation for c average we've obtained an equation for c tilde and now because c tilde is only involves the rapid uh, i mean the faster fluctuations we now work we apply perturbation methods on c tilde rather than c because we've already separated out by this decomposition the part of the concentration that was undetermined uh, at leading order okay so let's see how uh, the perturbation methods will work for c tilde whereas it couldn't work on c as a whole uh, so let's proceed so we substitute this again in this equation up here and uh, we look at order one so now at order one we don't expect uh, any contribution actually because like i said c tilde we expect it to be order p right because the leading order behavior should be independent of r but we'll see that play out as true so when we have one by r do by do r of r do c tilde not by do r equal to zero right uh, and then we have the same boundary conditions is bounded okay so now you will say hey wait a sec if i solve this problem i it uh, looks identical to the problem for c naught that we encountered in our naive application of perturbation theory and we would get c naught is equal to b right it seems like c naught tilde is undetermined but remember we have an additional condition on c naught tilde which is the mean of c naught tilde is zero by uh, i mean as a consequence of our definition of the decomposition right here so this condition now proves to be vital and applying this condition implies that b equal to 0 and therefore c naught tilde as expected is determined to be 0 right purely because we used we are able to use this condition 
So this is actually the power of the averaging method for such problems or what is known as the Lyapunov-Schmidt reduction. So whenever you encounter problems where at zeroth order in a perturbative treatment, the surviving operator actually has a null space or in other words, it has a solution which cannot be determined exactly. Uh, then you step into this Lyapunov-Schmidt reduction which decomposes uh, the unknown as an average part and a fluctuating part. In the Lyapunov-Schmidt uh, uh, way of looking at it, the average part is a projection of the field, the unknown field onto this uh, null space which is just uh, a constant or just one. So a projection onto one in this context is just the average. And then you have the remaining part, the remainder. And then you do the same thing, you obtain an equation for the average by projecting the equation uh, onto again uh, the constant. And then you subtract out that projection from the original equation to get an equation for this remaining part c tilde. But the remaining part c tilde comes along with this additional constraint. right? This additional constraint which we have used here uh, in the terms of linear algebra is also called the solvability condition. Right, so it appears here like a solvability condition allowing us to obtain a unique solution where we couldn't uh, do so earlier. Okay, so even if you don't really follow uh, this mathematics right now, it's for in future courses maybe this will make more sense to you. Uh, but the main point is again like I said to remember that this has a firm mathematical underpinning. But for our purposes, uh, we can follow this also just as a procedure, uh, keeping in mind the physical motivation. Okay, so uh, we've now obtained the leading order behavior for C tilde, but that doesn't tell us anything we didn't know yet. So now we go to order P, which is the first correction. So at order P now remembering that C naught tilde is zero, right, the only terms which uh, give us any contributions arise from the uh, cross-section average. Right, so if I come back here <coughs> at order 1, I have 1 by R. Those tilde 1 by 2 R. Right, that comes from the left hand side. And now because P multiplies here, I can only keep 0th order terms here. But C tilde at 0th order 0. Uh, this is also tilde, I am sorry, not prime. So this also uh, gives me no contribution. The only two terms that give me a contribution is this term and then a term coming from the cup mixing average where I have to set C tilde 0 because uh, you already have a P multiplying here. So we know this is at order P, right? So C tilde not is 0, therefore the only term surviving comes from the cross section average. Uh, but again, if I take the average of the, so it's a cross section average times U, this doesn't depend on R, I can take it out. So I will simply get uh, the average of U uh, resulting from this term. So doing that, you will see that I get uh, two terms. One is going to be U, which is uh, a function of R dou dou X of C bar, of, of sorry, of the mean C, right? That comes from this term here. And then from this term, I simply get minus And I have uh, u mean coming out which doesn't depend on x. So this comes out as a separate factor. This is all that survives uh, from this integral after, after you recognize that c tilde not the zeroth order contribution is 0. Okay, so now I can rewrite this as the deviation of u from its own cross section average times the derivative along the axial direction of the cross section average. So you see now that finally I've obtained what I was really after, which is a mean to means to determine C tilde as a function of the cross section average C. So now we just have to solve this equation uh, with the appropriate boundary conditions, which again is dou dou R of C1 tilde at 1 equals 0. C1 tilde is bounded at 0 and importantly the constraint 
that the cross section average of C1 tilde must also be 0. Okay, so when I do that, I have to expand out this u minus u bar, but remember u is just 2 u bar into 1 minus uh, r square. Right, so if I continue treating this integral, I can write this as uh, so 1 by r dou by dou r of r dou c1 tilde by dou r is equal to u hat to dou x of c. So for our purposes now, this is basically a constant because it this term doesn't depend on r at all. So for the pur purpose now of solving this equation, this is like a constant term and the variation in r is just captured by, so this remembers 2 times 1 minus r square and minus 1 from here. Right? So this term basically becomes uh, 2 minus r square minus 1. Sorry, 2 minus 2 r square uh, minus 1, which is 1 minus 2 r square. So it's 1 minus 2 r square times these uh, radially independent terms. So now I can uh, carry out two integrations, right, and use the boundary conditions and the constraint. Right, remember because uh, one boundary condition the bounded condition will get rid of the logarithmic term that arises. The outer condition would still leave me the an unknown constant as a solution, but to determine that unknown constant, I have to use the third uh, condition on the, the third constraint or the solubility condition. So if you do that, I will leave you to do this calculation, right, as I had done earlier. and you will get uh, the following solution. It is simple integration that I leave you to carry out. Remember, you have three conditions to apply. So this is what uh, two direct integrations uh, and using the conditions and the solubility condition will give you. So here, this is what I was after. I now have an expression for c tilde. So c not uh, c tilde not was zero. So this is basically all that I have for c tilde at order p. It is given here in terms of uh, the cross section average concentration. And so you can see the radial dependence at leading order involves a quad uh, quadratic and a quartic term. Okay, so this basically has, uh, we'll now stop at order p. So we've now completed all three steps of the averaging procedure. We, we started out by doing a decomposition on c for c average and c tilde. We obtained an equation for c average by averaging out the equation. We subtracted out that equation from the original equation to obtain an equation for c tilde. Uh, we now have to solve, we then had to solve the equation for c tilde approximately which we did using our classic perturbation techniques. And having done that, we've now obtained that equation for C tilde, which completes uh, uh, step uh, three, which was to obtain uh, C tilde in terms of uh, C average. So now we can look to finally close the average equation. So for that, we need to obtain uh, an expression for the cup mixing average. Okay, so let's see now what the cup mixing average is at order p using this expression. Okay, so this is just 2 times 0 to r, r into 2 which is independent of r, the 
average concentration times 1 minus r square times the cross section average plus the stuff that I have here. dr okay so you see this is again a straightforward integration you just have to multiply throughout expand all the terms and then carry out the integration oh sorry this is from uh, this is silly this is from 0 to 1 of course not 0 to r so that if you do this integration now you will get uh, it's again a straightforward though slightly lengthy uh, algebraic calculation but nothing uh, i mean nothing too complex so if you do this carefully, you will see that you get Cm is equal to now a leading order uh, contribution, which is just, uh, like I said, the result for a plug flow if u did not depend on r. But then you have a correction that arises because u does depend on r. Oh, sorry. So uh, something I didn't, so C tilde, I just substituted this expression, but C tilde is actually C tilde naught plus P times this expression so I should have a p here right that's why it's you know that this is the correction and this is the leading term so the leading term simply gives me uh, uh, the cross section average sorry this is not u bar this is the cross section average velocity so cm the leading contribution is just the average velocity times the average concentration and then a correction accounting for the fact that u it depends on uh, the radial direction which looks like this So the correction depends on the cross section average and then there's a factor that comes in here 1 by 48. Okay, this is nice. So we have now obtained an equation for CM. So now we can look at the, uh, yes, so now we have a model here. So this is the equation for CM and therefore I, I have the complete model. as given here. So this can be thought of as equation 4. Okay, so now you see that I have completed my, uh, I mean this is basically the complete simplified model to order p, right? So I'll have an, I have order p square terms. So if you want a more accurate model, you can carry out the perturbation calculation of c tilde to higher orders. But at leading order, this is the uh, average model that we get. So it's in terms of an equation for the cross section average in terms of the cup mixing average. And then the cup mixing average is related back to the cross section average by this algebraic equation on top, which involves the derivative of the cross section average in the longitudinal direction. Uh, just a sec, I don't have these angular brackets here. Yes. So just erasing that. Right, that's right. Okay, so this is our complete model. And this model can be solved if we provide, uh, I need an initial condition and a condition at x equal to 0 for cross section average, right? So if I, if I have these two, then I'll be able to solve uh, this equation entirely, right? Uh, because if I have this condition on C bar, I can obtain it inequality for Cm and so on. 